Great. Right? Yeah. Very flat, day. very flat. Oh, right. flat, really? Very flat. Not inflated, Passover. you know, no, no air in no, your boat. Real right. flat Passover. Good, good. That's good to hear. Yes. So we're back and we're going to be topical. We're, topical we're today. We're right on it. Right on it. We're not letting anything get by us. So right. in the news, just to help everybody out here, to give the right. backstory of where we're going, uh, the, the owner of the LA Clippers, the basketball team, mm -hmm. Gets uh, taped by his girlfriend, even though he's still married. You know, he's divorcing, but his girlfriend, young girlfriend, tapes him. Obviously, you can tell it's a setup. She's she knows what to say, and catches him saying some very racist comments and even some anti-Semitic comments. Just mm -hmm. bad comments altogether. Although I think he's Jewish. Ah, that doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Is he? Oh, that makes it even worse. I, mean, <laughs> no, no, I guess he's Jewish and she's black. But, right. You know, like, right. It was, it was, it, so yeah. somehow <laughs> she gets him on tape saying all these bad comments. Yeah. So now, because of that, people are talking boycott like they mm -hmm. do all the time now in our country. You boycott the Clippers, the games, everything about it. Right. So Rabbi Freeman texts me last night. You know, where did Jews stand in boycotts? That's right. right? So. I'm going to go out on a limb here. To which I uh, must admit that was pretty interesting. And as a great take, I never thought about girl cuts. Yeah, I know. That was, I was very upset. I was actually wow, very offended I, that, you know, that in this day a, and that age. That was an eye-opener for me. I never, ever dreamt that there right. could be such a thing as a girl cut. Yeah, in this day and age, you've got to be careful with your choice of words or you're <laughs> going right. to be boycotting this show soon. That's so right. we have to be very careful here right. what we say. Yeah, I, I think from the numbers I saw in the right. last I think right. they are boycotting the show. <laughs> we, need, we need to work on that. But we're topical. Yeah. So I'm going to take the opinion here and give you my opinion. Yeah. I don't believe in boycotts in any way, shape, or form. I don't believe in them. I don't think they're right, and I think they're always misused. Mm. At least in the last hundred years, I can't think of an example. Now, you might show some where they're good. Usually what it is is you get one group that wants power who takes advantage of the masses and then uses them with a boycott to take power from somebody else. And the only person that doesn't gain, people that don't gain from it are the masses. One group of power hurts the other group of power, and they're usually based on information that's not totally honest. I mean, there's a lot of examples we can use. Uh, well, we don't, we, the state of Arizona's got to be careful what they say, because if they do something bad, they're going to be boycotted, and they won't get the Super Bowl. Uh, the state of Israel, which is even the biggest example, which I'm sure we'll talk about, they're being boycotted by everybody by sped of, of, of misinformation, so we're going to boycott Israel. I don't believe in boycotts. I don't think they're a good thing. And secondly, and this is the most important thing, the reason I don't believe in these things, I don't believe in secret conversations being recorded. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. You know some of my friends, you know, Woody, Peter, a couple of my friends. Mm -hmm. I thought about it last night. If anybody recorded any conversation that we've ever had, I would be boycotted by the entire country. There are yeah. so many things that are said in those conversations. And that's why well, I didn't go to bed last night. They, but. they have recorded them, <laughs> and you, <laughs> they just haven't been released. They haven't just released yet. Yet. I stayed up last night trying to make a list, and this took a long time, a list of people that would boycott my friends and myself because of the conversation, the people mm -hmm. that we've offended. Mm -hmm. And I put together a small little list of these people. <laughs> right nice. here, we put together a list, and I figure I'd read out a oh. couple. And I just want to start off with a couple. That's not even double space. <laughs> no, it's not double space, and this was just space, last night. Right. Yeah, point, uh, point 0.8 font. Woo. Woo, this is, this is pretty tough. So I'm just going to review a, a, one page of a list of people that would be offended by the conversations that I've had. So I don't think it's fair. So I'm going to apologize now. Here's the people I'm going to apologize to, the people who would be offended. This is just by the okay. How I'll, many I'll people read. are going to be offended from me for sitting next to you? Get what? Yes. They <laughs> think say, why don't I boycott you? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Definitely this is going to be out. We got Japanese, Chinese, Vietnamese, Siamese, amputees, we got the vertically challenged, the horizontally challenged, the mentally challenged, my grandparents, Oliver Sholem, your grandparents, Oliver <laughs> Sholem, everybody's grandparents probably be offended by a lot of this. We got contortionists, abortionists, dwarfs, midgets, prostitutes, midget prostitutes, I guess because in their own category myself, right. homosexuals, bisexuals, trisexuals, heterosexuals, priests, reverends, rabbis, rebbitsons, and of course the Irish. Right. So that is just a small, <laughs> small list. I don't want to go through all of them of the mm. people that would be offended by the conversations that we just had last night. Mm. That was just in last night's 10-minute phone conversation. Wow. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm worried about these things. Is, is, is your private conversation is going to be listened to and you're mm. going to have to be subject to everything you say to your friends? Right. That's where I, I'm going to put this down here. We're done uh, with this now. Okay. I'll put this down here. Slam. Okay. okay. 
So, you know, this is very, I'm glad that you put it this way because see, this is where, this is where we get into a problem. And everyone, we make a problem for each other because we don't address a real issue. You said two things. One of which was clearly wrong, and the other which is very real, certainly to you, and I think to most people. Number one, let's take them one at a time. Talmud always says you're supposed to deal with the first thing first, the second thing second. Number one is boycotts. So I don't believe that boycotts are bad. I don't believe that boycotts are necessarily good. Boycotts are neutral. Boycotts are neutral. For example, in the late 1930s, when people were marching around in Manhattan carrying signs like boycott German goods, right. right, because they didn't like the policies of Adolf Hitler, and they were trying to get raise consciousness that people should ostracize him and all that, um, I think that that would be, uh, I would consider that to have been a healthy boycott. That one, okay. So, okay. I'm looking at. No, so boycotts are not bad or good. It just depends on what you're boycotting. If you, if you buy into the cause of the boycott, so then it's a good boycott. If you don't like the cause of the boycott, it's a bad boycott. Not necessarily, but I'm going to let you keep going with this one, and I'll and give my Let me my, tell you a little anti. bit about some Torah thought on okay. the idea of boycotts. There's actually something called a cherem. Cherem is a Hebrew word for putting someone off limits. Okay. And there is much, much literature from all the way back in temple times right. till now about putting people in cherem. That means ostracizing them, putting them off limits. And when someone is in cherem, that means we don't talk to them, we don't do business with them. That's the boycott. Right. We okay. boycott them, like totally. Total boycott of the people. And it has been used, it was used in temple times, when a person who was officially put into cherem by the rabbis in temple times, if he came into the temple, there was a rule. Everyone, when you walked in the temple, you have to turn to the right. And you always, you walked around one direction. Right. There's all traffic flowed in one direction. But the guy that was in the boycott, he came, he had to go the other direction. He had to go against the traffic. So everyone could immediately see. That's the guy we boycott. That's the guy. And everyone would say to him as he was walking by, may God put it in your heart that you should basically knuckle under and accept the rabbis and you'll be accepted back in the community. If they saw that a guy was doing something that they didn't like, And they couldn't prosecute him because every legal system always has its loopholes. The Torah's legal system has its loopholes. So for for some reason, they couldn't prosecute him. They could put the guy in cherem. They could excommunicate him and say, nobody deals with this guy until he knuckles under. Let's say there's some rumors that he's uh, doing some bad stuff, but we can't verify it. So they would put the guy into cherem until he can show, until he accepts the fact that he's going to act clean and get back with the program. So, and that, even till today, I just read recently that at the big fair, they used to have a, uh, a few times a year, they had these big fairs where Jews would come from all over Europe, the big trade fairs. So on the Sabbath, in the middle of the synagogue, they would get up and read a list of people that had made deals but hadn't paid for them. Wow. Because... They wanted to ostracize them publicly. Right. See, right. you know, you're going to come to synagogue, but guess what? If you're not paying your bills, they're going to get up there and say, he doesn't pay his bills. And now everyone knows, well, I'm not doing any business with you. You don't pay your bills. You should try that, by the way, you know, in, in the shul. That might work. Yeah, yeah, that would be great, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to come here. You, stand up right now. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, even in the Talmud, they did have a situation like that where someone was acting in opposition to one of the rabbis, and the rabbi made him stand up. The rabbi was lecturing, and he had the guy stand up, and he didn't let him sit down the rest of the lecture, which you know led to a whole rebellion and all that because right. he was grossly embarrassed. But the bottom line is that we do that. When we see someone's acting in- inappropriately, we will call a boycott, and we will put all of his property off limits, and we don't deal with them. <clears throat> that is an effective method, and it can be used. Now, what you're worried about is something else. That was always used, this boycott thing was always right. used for people that did something wrong. Yeah, I'm with you there. Now here, it's stepping over into the mind police. 
because the guy didn't do anything that anyone has identified as wrong. He said some things that people don't like. He clearly believes things well, that. <coughs> that people don't like. This was, but it's not <coughs> like he said these in, in, in operating his business. He didn't make this statement to you. He didn't make this statement to the public. And it thought to be private conversation. Right. I, I, that's why I know I exaggerated a little right. bit. But in private <coughs> conversations, does he even really believe that? Maybe he's fighting with the girl. Maybe this is the way they have their conversations. It's, right. it's not your business right. what he talks about. So that's about. really what you're worried about. Well, and the truth the is, that's one, one of the things. Thing. Thing. I'm worried about that. <clears throat> and I think that everybody should be worried about that because everyone at one time or another is going to share some idea that is not embraced by the mainstream. Some people more often than others. And some people, you know, spend a lot of their lives trying to be in sync with the mainstream. Right. But everybody at some point or another is going to come out with a situation where they find themselves at odds, at least mentally, emotionally, with the mainstream. Now, what happens then? Do we boycott them? So do we do boycotts of <clears throat> restaurant chains because we don't like the attitudes of the owner of the restaurant chain? You know, do we not shop in stores? Now, maybe sometimes I don't. I choose not to shop in a store. Let's say I know that there's a certain guy and he is promoting something I don't believe in. Let's say I happen to know that the owners of a certain chain of stores um, happen to like to fund Palestinian terrorists. Right? right? I don't want to shop there. Matter of fact, I encourage my friends not to shop there. I say, you know where that money is going? That money is going to support these people that are harming other people. Right. So <clears throat> boycotts are not wrong, per se. However, what we're all worried about is, what if the person has done nothing wrong, nothing identifiably wrong? They just happen to harbor beliefs that are antithetical to maybe the mainstream of society. <clears throat> At that point... Do we boycott? And that's where everyone's really worried about. And that's why it's better not to talk about whether boycotts are good or bad. But to, and the answer is not to like get rid of all boycotts. The answer is to say, should we be boycotting someone for his rotten attitude or belief system? You know, because, and that everyone has to worry about. Because, and I'm worried about it, too. Because someone could kind of turn around and boycott me because I might have some beliefs that are at odds with the uh, mainstream of society. And they could be coming after me. And before you know it, then I can't even speak my mind or say anything. I've got to lay low because society doesn't believe in, you well, know. But I, but I think we're at that <clears throat> point now. And, and my point about it is, basically, we said, but even more. My worry is, yes, exactly, that you're not going to be able to speak your mind anymore, which I think we're at a point in society where we can't. But not just that, but be, be, boycotts are used for such a power situation now. Well, let's say we decide we're going to boycott the L.A. Clippers, and we're going to show this guy, because for a private conversation we have, we're going to teach him a lesson. But at the same time, there's the hot dog vendor that sells hot dogs at, 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 the, at the Clippers game. He needs to support his family. There's a guy that owns some parking lots there or is renting parking lots where he makes $20 a head when a guy parks the car. That could be thousands right. of dollars out of his pocket. So what we're going to do, so to this group over here that is somehow going to gain from it. Now, if no one gains from it, it's a different story. But there's a group. That got, usually the, today, when someone institutes a boycott, they're going to gain from it whether they're going to gain power, political power, their position is going to be put forth, or monetary power, they're going to gain. The people that do the boycott, boycott are the masses in the middle, and the people that get hurt are the masses in the middle. And that today seems to be the, the ultimate use of a boycott. The boycott in Israel is a great example. There's no legitimate reason to boycott Israel, but if you go get the ignorant masses, or either on the college campuses or wherever it is, you know, there are, Israelis are harming the poor Palestinians, let's not buy products made in Israel. And what happens, A, you, you harm everybody that, that, that makes these products, that sells these products, that deals these products, and it's for a reason that might not be real or rational in the first place. And I think that happens more so today than not. I can't think of anything in today's society, you might, where there's a rational boycott. Well, the boycott is a, um, it's a tool. It's a tool. And, you know, this is one of the ways to show whether you've got support or you don't have support. When you have an idea and you want to promote that idea, if you can get the masses to stand behind you, 
You can use it as a tool. It's been used as a effective, kosher tool when necessary because there are many times when people are doing bad things that you can't always deal with through the law. You can only deal with it through pressure. Um, and it's yeah. usually the powerless <clears throat> utilizing this tool to bring equanimity with the powerful. Listen, the, in the um, but not now in the um, in the uh, the bus strike right. in Birmingham bus strike. You know that was the, the powerless. The reason that they they broke them was because the bus company. You know, had to come to uh, to come to terms because they needed the riders. That I think is a perfect example of a good boycott. You got the powerless, <clears throat> the powerless out there. You listen, this is ridiculous. All the powerless power was not going to help them out, so they joined together and they utilized the boycott to bring down the powerful. Right. Today it doesn't seem to be doing that. Right now it's the powerful utilizing the powerless to take the power from somebody else. Yeah. Well, you know, it makes all, me nervous. It all depends on you know who you like or don't like right. and which side of the boycott, you know, like who, who and who is considered to be powerful and who is considered to be powerless, you know, mm -hmm. like people would consider this guy, I think he's, the, he would be the caricature of the powerful guy right. in America, you know, he's the one with the, uh, with the, uh, the owns the sports team. People who own sports team in America are considered to be That's the epitome power. of power. Yes, true. Right? If you own a sports team, see, he owns the sports team. He's probably a billionaire. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. You know, from what I understand, that he owns lots of properties and right. you know, and all that type of stuff. A very, very wealthy guy. Just based on the list of gifts that I saw that he gave his girlfriend, he must be, be a generous guy. He must be. <laughs> he must be a pretty wealthy guy. Right. So you know, to call him. Uh, to call him powerless, I don't know. No, no, but I, my, my point is that the, the group on the other side that would institute a boycott if it happens are not just these innocent masses. There are people, that, the, the, those people today, they're in it for power. The people that were going to boycott, the people that boycotted Chick-fil-A were in it for power. The people that boycott Israel are in it for power. Right. The, these are not just some innocent bystanders who, you know, we have no power, we need to, to group up. They find their target, and I think they utilize the boycott. And, and this and is the way hurt. that's true. This is the way it always is. You know, in um, in uh, when the Soviets took over, uh, anyone that had bourgeoisie harbored bourgeoisie thoughts and wanted to run a business was, of course, ostracized. And ostracized you know, then nicely, right, then money. then well, then when they got more powerful. Right. But in the very beginning, right. the whole thing was to ostracize them and turn people against them, and, and no one wanted to touch them and do business with them and marry into their family or anything like that. Right. So that is always that is one of the ways that you create a reality in your society that you turn people against a particular thing. Now, sometimes it's a bad thing, and people do need to be turned against it. Sometimes you or I might think it's a good thing, and other people are turning them against it. But everyone uses it's the same tool. Like I said, I believe the tool is a neutral tool. Okay. I think it's a neutral tool. What we're all particularly worried about is how it's being used, and in this case particularly, uh, not only is it being used against someone, it's not just being used against someone who did anything that we can identify as wrong. What's really happening here, and like I said, to me the scary part is that it's being done against someone who has a attitude. And when you're starting to use boycotts against attitudes, although attitudes are not acted upon. So let's say I got a guy who's a bigot. Okay, he's a bigot, absolute and total bigot, yet in his business dealings, he treats everyone equally. Okay, he, he, if he cannot be identified to have broken any laws, he treats everyone equally, and, you know, like when he cheats on his wife, he even cheats, you know, equally. With girlfriend with, with, too. <laughs> right, he cheats with, like, people of oh, all gotcha. races. Oh, gotcha. okay. He cheats with people of all races just to make sure that he's, you know, like, and equal. equal opportunity cheats. And equal opportunity cheats. So if the, guy, if the guy is willing to cheat with everyone, no, the, he harbors these attitudes, so he harbors those attitudes. That, to me, is where it's getting very scary because then what you're getting into is the mind police and where people have to be uh, now sent. I'm sure in the end of this, even if they boycott him, he'll probably have to be sent for re-education somewhere, so, right? and you know, and, and he'll have to, you know, and he'll have to come out and be penitent and uh, go on maybe, Oprah, 
re rehabilitated somewhere, but only after going to some faraway place where he will be, where his mind will be cleansed and all that, which is okay if that's the way you want to do it. But like I said, everybody is going to run afoul of the machine sometime or another. And that's where it gets really scary. And do you want to start to go down that road or not? That's the deal. Well, and is, doesn't it also kind of run afoul or get close to Lashahorum? My situation is this. I don't know anything about this guy. I've never heard his name before in my life. I don't follow the Clippers. But because of a private conversation, obviously a setup conversation, this was, mm -hmm. this was obviously done intentionally, maybe even edited, we don't know, to a script to bring out something to him. Now, <clears throat> in my mind's eye, they've killed him in Miami. This guy is a racist. I don't know. I've never met the guy in my life. Right. I now think this guy's a horrible, brutal racist. Right. Do we, as, a, as Jews, do we allow what this woman does? Should, should we even ignore this, not even listen to this at all? Is that not Lasha Horam? Yeah, I, I would I'd say that it is. It, it is certainly Lashonara, and most likely, um, not that I'm a big follower of TMZ. Right. You know, I guess the whole show. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I would pretty much say that you probably yeah. couldn't even like watch the entire thing. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what part of it you actually <laughs> thought you could watch in the first good place, point, yeah. and why would anyone be surprised that Lashonara would show up on a show like that? That's right. I mean, what else do they do? One. You know, I mean, if it's not Lush and Hara, it's some other thing that's also prohibited. That could be because, the title you know, of the show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's it all about, you know? So, yeah, basically we're supposed to steer clear of all of that. I think there's another, um, there's another little morality play. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, someone that um, gets involved that's like, you know, like, you know, didn't your mother always say to you, you know, like, like, don't get involved with like expensive mistresses and uh, right. do stuff in there, you know, because he ends up being nothing but trouble, right? I mean, my thing is you get the <laughs> so, cheap mistresses. That's, that's, so, that's the I, you know, I don't really have a lot of, uh, my heart's not going out to this guy right. because uh, his uh, moral conduct left something to be desired. And it is not at all surprising that when someone conducts himself like that, they ended up saying things that'll also get them in even more trouble. So I'm not really too worried about this guy and what is going to befall him because it certainly looks like he's getting his comeuppance just from the lifestyle that he's leading. Which is true. Yeah. Well, let me make the example. I'll give you a classier example. The guy used to be on television, Dog the Bounty Hunter. Ever heard of Dog the Bounty Hunter? This is a classic guy. This is a classic yeah. guy. The guy with yeah, a long, yeah, white yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, right. the mullet in the back. Right, yes, right, so right, he, right, yes. Yeah. He's bounty hunts people. And he had a, it was even with his daughter, he had a private conversation with his daughter or his son, I think it was with his daughter, and in the conversation he was talking about the daughter's boyfriend, and the daughter's boyfriend was black. And in this private phone conversation, they were yelling at each other back and forth, he didn't want to date it, and he used the N-word on, on, on the private right. phone conversation with his daughter. Well, his daughter, who also must be a real classy gal, right. released these tapes to right. the press. Right. So now they're canceling his show. They're doing whatever. And again, I don't know that Dog the Bounty Hunter, and he sounds like a classy guy, <laughs> would ever be a racist. He might be the, the ant antipathy of a racist. But because of that tape, the whole country, the whole world that listens to Dog the Bounty Hunter thinks he's a racist. He loses his show and everything happens. Is that something acceptable? Should, and one, obviously, you hear in that story, you now think, I shouldn't have told you, you now think Dog the Bounty Hunter is a racist. Well, yeah. you might not have thought that before. Yeah, so, I, you know, again, in all of those places, this guy is like the other people. He lives a phony life. In other words, his whole life, what the guy is doing with the Bounty Hunter and the TV show and all that stuff, uh, I did see it one time, and, you know, I get enough idea of the... Thing of okay. uh, the, I get an idea like what's going on over there, and it's not all of the uh, highest uh, moral turpitude. And he likes to, you know, would go around and bust people up, and he would say some pretty derogatory things towards the people. But it was all funny because they were all criminals and stuff right. like that. But you know, you get the what you know. It's sort of like you live by the sword, die by the sword. If someone wants to be like that uh, famous, and the truth is, e even if when you find people that are true blue and they really are what they are if they if they pur purport to be something they're like that all the way through they don't live one life uh, project one image and then in their reality they're projecting another image anyone that is living a conflicted life don't we all live a conflicted life a little bit yeah well you know if if you were if you were life 
is based on public perception. That's if that's right. what you're all about, if you're all about how the public perceives you and you want to perceive, project some image that is other than what you really are because it sells better and you're making a right. boatload of money, right. well, then you better get yourself in line. I mean, otherwise, if you're selling that, if you're selling yourself, then yourself better be that self all the way through. If I'm selling suits, they got to be decent suits. If I say I'm selling good suits, they're good suits. If I say I'm selling cheap suits, here I am. I'll sell you a cheap suit. It's cheap. It's made like garbage, but I'm not charging right. too much money. Okay, so then people don't expect me. That's the type of guy I am. Well, you've just kicked off every politician that there really is, isn't it? Yeah, that? well, that's the problem. That's what politicians, especially, they always get the guy who makes all these statements right. on, on the floor of Congress, right. and then they catch him <laughs> later on, catch you know. Him. Okay, so, but what a, I'll give an example. Mitt Romney, you know, nice guy. He was running for president. The guy on the other side, the head of the Senate, and the Democrat, Harry Reid, the head of the Senate, says, I've heard rumors he hasn't paid taxes for 10 years. Right. Now the guy now is that I, I don't want to compare, but okay, you get the situation now. Everybody in the country, well, Mitt Romney doesn't pay taxes. Let's not vote. He doesn't pay. Now it turns out the guy made the thing up. I mean, he had no evidence whatsoever. Right. Is that any different? You know, no one ever made any rumors about Romney about any of his moral. You know, they got him on on taxes, they get, but they didn't get him on like any personal moral conduct or yeah, anything they, like they that. Tr they dug as deep as they, they could. Tried, they tried, <laughs> but they couldn't. You but know? it turns out he did I, pay I his taxes. Credit for that. But it turns out that the guy who said it literally made it up, and later on they found that he made. There was no evidence. There was not even a rumor of that. Right. But he made that rumor. Right. So, what, but, but are we saying now that anybody can say whatever they want, and if you're not living a clean life, then uh, you know? And even though I think in this situation Romney was, but where does the line get drawn here? Right. So you know, this would be uh, this would be something akin to somebody you know uh, is going to be uh, honored, uh, has a personal public persona in the community as being someone, let's say that cares for children. Right. And then they find out that he owns a factory in right. Taiwan that employs like, you know, six-year-olds working from six in the morning till uh, 10 at night, right. you know. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, obviously, if you're making your name off of that you are X, right. then you got to really be X. Now, if you're not making your name off of X, if you're a guy and you say, listen, this is who I am and I tell you who I am and you want to buy in my store, buy in my store, and right. you don't want to buy my store, don't that's one thing. But when people live in these like sort of phony public persona lives, it should not be at all surprising that they ended up getting, end up getting caught in this, this is like I just read some quote from some some lady that um, some movie star that um, they took a picture of her in a uh, in a very uh, in uh, uh, an indecent pose right. as she was showing up at a um, at a some an event you know, she's uh, at an event yeah and she was like oh it's so horrible that they take they don't give anyone any privacy well <laughs> she's living her life not to have privacy that's how she makes her money. So the whole thing is phony. If you live that phony type of life, if you're living off of, off of unprivacy, right. then you can't be upset if unprivacy does you in. Lack of privacy you. does, yeah. Well, the yeah. one last question, this is the one. For Jews, though, and this is the thing, is it right for Jews to listen to that tape of the girl recording the, 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 the guy or listening to the Dog the Bounty Hunter tape? Is it right... Should you just, you know what, he might do what he do. I'm not going to listen to the tape because that's Lashon Hara. I don't want to hear it, and I don't well, want to hear that tape. I'll tell you, there's an interesting rule about Lashon Hara also. Okay. A lot of surprises here. All and right. that is once something has become public knowledge, um, it's not even prohibited to repeat well, it. So if I, were, if I were to walk up to someone, let's say my wife, who like doesn't pay attention to any of this stuff, right. and I tell her, you know what Donald Sterling said, okay? So that's not Lashon Hara. Because everywhere she goes, everyone's going to be talking about it. And, you know, once it's public knowledge, it's what's called in front of th uh, three people. Once something's been said in front of three people, it's like everyone in the world knows it. And once it's public knowledge, it's not, you're not even prohibited from repeating it. Listening to it, you're not prohibited, and not even from repeating it. So I could tell it to someone that hadn't even heard it, because the presumption is, if they didn't hear it yet, by tomorrow or the day after, they will. So right. it doesn't matter the fact that I'm not, I'm not bringing it to them. It was going to get to them anyway. So I don't really think that it's Lush and Hara. I'm not really feeling bad about this guy. And I don't really think the boycotts are 
you know, I think boycotts are neutral. I like some of them. I don't like some of them, right? Uh, probably as many as I don't like, I do like, or whatever, vice versa. But the bottom line is I am worried about the mind control deal. I mean, the fact that someone is known to be a bigot or whatever he is known to be, and as a matter of fact, I heard someone saying that this guy is a well-known bigot. Like everyone knows that he is, and you know there was a guy that was on the um, there was a guy I heard that was uh, on a radio program in L.A. and he said all the years that I was there, I always called him the slumlord, you know. Right. So he was known to be that. So you know, still we know that there are people like that. We know people have all kinds of attitudes in society. Is it our job to cleanse people's That's minds right. or cleanse thoughts? We can demand. Is it my job, for example? I can demand, given our society, that people not discriminate against me in the public arena because I'm Jewish. But is it my right to go demand that every person that harbors anti-Semitic thoughts that they give them up? Do I have to force them to cleanse their mind? You know, and that's where it gets scary because when you start going after that, then you start going after everyone that has any idea and everyone will have some idea at some point or another that runs against the mainstream, and then, who knows, they could send you off to, uh, for, to a camp for re-education. I've heard it's happened before in history. Yeah. I've heard yeah. it. All right, well, this is an interesting topic. Interesting topic, because I think there's a lot of different ways to look at this thing. I'm very interesting to hear what the Jewish point of view is on this. Good stuff. At least my Jewish point yeah, of view. At least your Jewish <laughs> point of view. If you guys are boycotting Jeff and the rabbi next yeah, week, right. please come back and we'll hear another great, interesting, and topical right. conversation.